52 episodes in. This is episode 53. I believe it because I know there's a lot more coming. And I also don't believe it because how has a year passed? What if there are things we never had the opportunity to learn? We've all been to school or training, but there are things they never taught us that actually make a powerful difference in life. I'm here to share with you all the pieces you've been missing, mindset, health, success, and more, and we'll all learn together from guests along the way. We may not have learned it the traditional way, but oh my goodness, let's keep learning how to do things differently. OMG Teach Me Crew, this is episode 53, which means we have hit one year of episodes on this weekly podcast. This is the beginning of year two, and to say I'm excited is probably an understatement. (laughs) So today I want to share with you the things I've learned in year one of doing a weekly podcast. And as always, this is always true in life, the lessons I've learned can make a powerful difference for you as well. So I'm going to throw in some funny ones because that's how I roll and laughter is healthy and also some really useful ones that I think will be impactful for you. So first of all, the name. I have had so many conversations over the past year How did I come up with the name OMG Teach Me? So I did say this in the trailer a little bit, but if you've listened, you may have heard that I say, oh my goodness, just about every episode (laughs) when either I'm excited about something or I'm surprised about something, oh my goodness is my go-to. And this reminds me of a funny movie scene. So if you've ever seen the movie Notting Hill with Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts, You might remember the scene where he is trying to climb over the fence into a private garden in London, and he falls and he says, (laughs) whoops-a-daisy, and she makes fun of him, and they joke about him saying, whoops-a-daisy. Well, I always think of that because that's kind of how I speak, and oh my goodness is my go-to phrase. So that is where the OMG came from. Teach Me came from, of course, the idea that I have been a teacher and a trainer, and there's just all of this powerful information, these powerful secrets and tips and ways of thinking that are out there that we may not know. So that's the Teach Me. The podcast did not get that name by accident. (laughs) So the other thing that I learned about me, I don't know if the first one was a thing I learned, but another thing I learned about me is when I get excited, I get louder. And maybe this is you as well, but sometimes my family has to kind of make the motion to me, put, you know, hand up in the air, kind of motioning down like you're talking too loudly. When my sister and I get together, oh my heavens, it's even worse. We get excited, we get loud. And here's what I learned. That is an editing challenge when it comes to a podcast. Now, if you're speaking, it is very good to change your speed of speaking and change your volume for emphasis. So sometimes maybe it's good to slow down. It actually grabs people's attention when I slow my speed a little bit. Our brains go, wait. That's different. What happened? And then maybe when I speed up, then that grabs our brains again. That's different. What happened? And the same thing with volume. I could get quieter. I could get louder. But when I get really loud because I am really thinking something is funny or thinking something is exciting, it presents for me an editing challenge with the audio. So there we are. I doubt I'm ever going to have a change in that. It's just an editing challenge. (laughs) Now, More things I've learned this year. Okay, let's dive further into the list. Accepting compliments is a skill that we all need to perfect. And I don't say perfect lightly. Obviously, no one is perfect. We don't need to strive to be perfect. And at the same time, when someone gives you a compliment, you can say thank you. And you don't have to qualify it. And you don't have to say, but this is my bad dress or, oh, but, you know, blah, blah, blah or I didn't think blah, 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 thank you. 
And the reason that's part of my list of things I've learned this year is because a number of people have said to me, oh, you really do have a great voice for podcasting. And the funny part of that is I didn't think that at all. When we listen to our own voices, they sound different than what we think they will. If that right, if that makes sense, it sounds different in your head than when you hear a recording. So I was not feeling sure and confident about that at all. And I have been reminded that accepting compliments is really important. Say thank you. And that's it. No qualifications. Okay, perspective. Now, I have been for the past year a beginner podcaster. Maybe I'm not anymore. Maybe this is the the graduation that I have achieved. I'm not a beginner anymore. As a beginner podcaster, I didn't see myself as an expert. Of course, when we begin anything in life, do we see ourselves as an expert? I think maybe we only see ourselves as an expert if we really don't have a realistic picture and the ego is a little bit overly involved. So I saw myself as learning, not really being successful yet necessarily. And kind of to add on to that, I have a much bigger vision of where this podcast is going to go. I see the listening and downloading numbers going crazy. I see the podcast creating just more and more of an impact. And I'm going to keep doing it no matter what, because I love this. I just, I see a lot bigger things coming. So that's my perspective. And interestingly enough, when I have conversations with other people who are not podcasters, it doesn't matter how much of a beginner I am. It doesn't matter how new it is. When they see that a podcast exists, when I say, yes, it's on all the podcast major streaming services, when I say, yes, it's been a year, people look at me as if I am an expert. And isn't that true in life? We are so hard on ourselves in a lot of ways. And why are we? Because when someone else looks at our achievements or the things that we just do on a day-to-day basis, those things might be just completely out of the realm of what that other person knows how to do or even would ever consider doing. And so that means they're probably looking up to us as, wow, he or she is able to do this thing that I never considered doing. While we're beating ourselves up and saying, oh, I'm not good at this thing. Oh, it's not going that well. Oh, why did I do this? So just think about perspective. And there's a saying, the shoe is on the other foot or put yourself in their shoes. I don't know why we're focused on shoes with both of those, but both of those sayings can kind of help us in this way where we want to think from the other perspective. We want to take into account that our view is not the only view. And boy, is that a life lesson. Goodness, I could go quite far from there. So I'll just let you ponder that. What's another perspective that you could take when you look at something that's bothering you or something that you aren't feeling great about? Because I bet there is another one. All right. Now, another thing I've learned is there are amazing people doing amazing things everywhere, every day. One of the great blessings of doing a podcast where a lot of my episodes are interview episodes is that I get to meet people who are just making an incredible impact in the world. And some of them that I've already interviewed, you haven't even heard from yet, which is sort of funny to think about. And I always have to remember which episodes have gone out at this time right now and which episodes haven't. But let's just walk back through for a moment some of the things we've talked about. And I'm gonna focus on the episodes where I had a guest because there were plenty of topics, if I do say so myself, that were really impactful that were me sharing with you. The guest episodes. So we talked, I say we, I should say I, right? I talked to, and you listened to me talk to, a number of people who have written books an author of a book about thank you notes and gratitude, an author of a book about taking your lumps in life and still creating success, an author of a book about growing up as a different ethnicity and making a success out of yourself and all the issues there. I 
talked to some life coaches who just have done some amazing things. We talked about money mindset and Karen Mullins, who is my only so far two-time guest, really made a difference with that episode and just impacted the way that we think about money and the way that we think about success. I talked to an expert in therapy dogs, which is something we probably don't know enough about and should. An expert in tapping, which is something that I absolutely am going to include in my coaching offers. An expert in self-talk, which is again, oh my goodness, a life changer. A naturopathic doctor who's an expert in gut health. An expert in sleep. I mean, I could go on and on and on. An expert in how to look great in pictures. An expert in emotional eating and binge eating. And that was a powerful one for sure. I have talked to experts in human design, in the strengths finder, in the Enneagram, in healthy eating and healthy living. And coming up this year, different ways to rest your body, adrenal and thyroid health relationships in midlife, meditation and mindfulness, menopause and weight gain in menopause, self-care when you're hitting burnout. Oh my goodness, all of these things are already ready to go out in the world and I'm so excited to share them with you. And those are all interviews from people that I have had the great good fortune to meet while doing this podcast. So one of the questions I get is, well, how do you connect with these people? The podcast world is such a fascinating one. There are Facebook groups for podcasters. There are people and companies out there who are presenting guests to podcasters and and spotlighting podcasts who are looking for guests. And so gradually I've connected with people through all these different methods. Some of them, of course, were people I knew already. The author of the thank you note book I knew already. The woman I spoke with about following politics without driving yourself nuts, I knew already. There are a few others I knew already. And I was able to just create such an impact in my own life and hopefully in your life by connecting with all these new people. So you may not be thinking about doing a podcast. You may not be thinking about speaking and that's okay. Think about how you can connect with people that might have an impact like this on your life. And maybe that's reading books and listening to podcasts. I absolutely believe that an author of a book that you read can be kind of like a mentor to you. Ideally, this podcast is kind of like a mentor to you. It doesn't always have to be in person, but just make sure that you've included into your life ways of learning from and connecting with people who make a difference. I'm actually even now working with one of my guests, and that was our episode on worthiness, to create my next offers that I will be putting out into the world, and you'll hear about those soon. So just what an impact being able to speak with and know and interact with new people and people who are trying to make an impact on their worlds. It's just been incredible. Maybe you are growing a business and using social media. Maybe you have kids or committees who need a basic website for sports or for something at their school. For me, it's having a link in bio for this podcast that is easy for me to update, looks fantastic, and easy for you to find what you are looking for. I use Boss Lady Bio, and you can absolutely create a website that looks fantastic fantastic and you do not have to know how to code. Have a look at what Boss Lady Bio offers at omgteachme.com slash recommendations. You can even try it for free. Now, let's also talk about when I started. So I get the question of how did you decide to start a podcast and what did you do to get started a lot? And that's a fair question. Maybe you're thinking about it or maybe you're just thinking, 
how did she decide to do a new thing? (laughs) And I did an episode on decision making that will probably be helpful here. So my story was that I have always had a heart for teaching and training. And I've trained in the corporate environment and I've taught in high school. I have led a network marketing team and done teaching in that way and mentoring in that way. Now I am coaching as well. So it's always been related to sharing information, uplifting people, and just providing value in that way. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to really put my all into a speaking type of role where I might need to travel and go to different speaking engagements. I love to speak to groups and I probably will continue to do that. And at the same time, did I want that type of travel to be my main thing? So I was pondering this and listening to some podcasts one day early in 2023 and realized, oh my goodness, why could I not have a podcast and do the speaking and teaching that I love to do in that format? And I can do it from anywhere. It solves all the things I've been pondering. And so I want you to hold on to this question, why can't I, whatever, insert in the blank? Because the answer is you can. And maybe it's more, what if I can blank? Let your brain ponder it. That's a more positive way to look at it because when we do the can't, our brains don't always interpret that correctly. What if I can do that thing I always wanted to do? What would happen? Or as my coach Jilly says, what would happen if? Let it be a a daydreamy, positive sort of thing that you ponder. Because when I realized that a podcast might be the answer to what I had been pondering, then what do I do? And what I will always tell you about decision making is you can give yourself a little time to ponder. I like a little bit of input. I like to let it run run around in my brain a little bit. That's my human design style. And then I just decide because you won't know the how until you decide. You don't need to know exactly how to have a podcast until you decide you are going to have a podcast. You don't need to know exactly how to start your own business until you decide you are starting your own business. The decision comes first. And sometimes we get that backwards and we think, well, I don't know how to do that. So I guess I better not do it. Flip it. Decide I am doing this. Now the next question is, what do I need to learn? How can I learn those things? And it's an amazing thing when you look for that information, a how to start your own podcast course last spring popped into my email box. And I took that course and I learned how to do the audio and I learned about podcast hosting and I learned how to do a bit of editing and what sort of graphics I would need. I hired a graphic designer to make the initial graphics and give me some templates that I could work with going forward. And I was off and running. Now, did I learn more and more and more and more as I went along? Absolutely. I updated my graphics partway through the year. I updated some of my sound. I'm going to update that again, of course. I will gradually have more support and it won't be all just me. And that's how everything goes. We learn as we do. We get better. We have a more more focused way of doing things, maybe. We get more efficient. And the only way we get that way is to just start because then you learn and then you get better and then you have ideas. Now, teachers know this. If you're a teacher, you know this because everyone says to teachers, and by the way, this is absolutely true. It's not just something everyone says. Your first couple of years are going to be hard. By year three, you're going to feel like you get you got your footing. You are rolling. That was my experience. The first year of teaching was a challenge. I was teaching middle school the first year. And then in my second year, I switched to high school and I stayed with high school the rest of the time. So my second year, in a sense, was almost a first year again. And then I had another year. And then I had taught that same thing before. And then I had a better handle on classroom management. And then I had a better handle on how the school worked. And then it got better and better. Now, teaching is never easy. I'm never going to tell you it got easy. That is for sure. But teachers know that you have to just start. 
and you're going to learn and you're going to get better. Podcasters know this too. I would say business owners, once you've started and once you've grown your business, know this too. You at some point made a decision that you were going to do something. Maybe it was direct sales. Maybe it was a brick and mortar business. Maybe it was your own consulting company. And you had to figure out or hire someone to help you figure out how to get the basics running, the website or the basic materials or the place and the initial employees that you need. And then there's always a whole lot to learn. And there's always things you're going to change. Always. So just start. Nobody is the expert at first. And I have heard a couple of people on social media recently who are just having massive success in their business say something like, yes, I'm one of those overnight, it actually took 10 years successes. (laughs) Meaning sometimes we see people and we think, wow, where did they come from? They're like an overnight success. Why can't I do that? Well, no, I promise you for the last however many years, it's going to vary they have been working towards this point. We didn't see them because they weren't a success yet, at least not enough of a success that they were brought to our attention. That's not to say they weren't a success. It just wasn't big enough that we noticed them yet. So we think it's overnight. It's not. Just start. You'll get it. Everything new takes time. Now, kind of following along with that, I also learned that I really don't have control over when and how things happen. (laughs) My episodes that came out in December didn't have quite as many downloads initially. Well, that's scary. If you have growth and you have growth and you have growth and then suddenly it drops off, what's going on? What have I done wrong? That's what we ask ourselves. What did I do wrong? What, What about that is my fault? Well, guess what? Are as many people listening to podcasts in December right around the holidays? Maybe not. Now, I continued putting episodes out. Some podcasts actually take a holiday break and they take a few weeks off from putting episodes out. There's no right or wrong way to do that. And I just had to realize I don't always get to say exactly how things happen, exactly how the growth looks, exactly how the numbers look, exactly what connections I make. I'm not in control. My responsibility is to keep creating something that is valuable to you. And that's all I can do. I can make sure the episodes get out there. I can make sure I feel good about them. I can make sure that they're providing value from my perspective and everything else is not up to me. So do your best to work towards whatever your vision is. And then as the wonderful Karen Mullen says, let it be easy from there. If we decide to hold on to the belief that something is going to be hard, tough, long, gritty, grindy, then we're going to notice all the things about that that are hard, tough, long, gritty, and grindy. I'm making up words. What if we decide, here's where we want to be. You need to have a vision of where you want to be. You need to see that happening now. You need to feel good about it. Of course, we know we're not there yet, but what if we decide where we want to be and we decide, you know what, I'm going to keep doing my best. I'm going to put out the value. I'm going to do what I know I need to do. And I'm going to let it be easy. I'm going to let it be smooth. I'm going to let myself enjoy the process. You're probably going to end up in the same place, maybe even in a better place. And boy, is it going to be more fun along the way. Because isn't life the along the way part? (laughs) I don't think we're ever going to actually just get somewhere and go, "Mm, okay, I've done everything I ever wanted to do in life. I'm going to go sit on the beach for the next 20 years. I mean, that sounds good, but in all honesty nobody just sits on the beach for 20 years. We have to have things that we want to do and that challenge us and that engage our brains and they can be fun. So let it be fun. Now, another thing I've learned that's sort of interesting is social media is a great way to support a business you're growing and it can be fun, but it is not the one key to growth and We need to curate that social media so that it is a positive thing for our brains, for our minds and our quality of life. So what I mean by social media is not the key to growth is that if you're going to grow a business or if I'm going to grow a podcast, I'm going to, of course, have it out on all the socials. And that's not necessarily going to bring in droves of listeners. 
I need to make sure I'm providing value. Even if I do bring in droves of listeners for my social media post, if I'm not providing value to you on this podcast, you're not going to stay. So provide value in what you're doing. Let social media support what you're doing. It doesn't have to be the main thing. And please, please be open to using experts to help you. I've used many experts along the way, and I will use many more because we are not done growing this. And the other thing I said was that I want you to curate your social media. So this is not necessarily a lesson that I learned this year, but it goes in here nicely. And it is a lesson I've learned over and over and over again. Social media can be a very negative thing for us mentally. And I know there are some mindset coaches and life coaches out there posting about this that you will see if you look for it. Scrolling is not that great for our brains. And if we're scrolling through stuff that makes us feel bad, that's even worse. So here's what I'm saying. If you are looking through your social media, let's take Instagram for an example, and you're continually seeing people, maybe they're in the same business as you, let's take that as an example, and they're doing so well according to their posts, and they're just, oh my gosh, look at this, look at this, you're getting like that little green-eyed monster of jealousy, or you're making yourself feel bad because you're not where they are, how is that helping? None of that is productive. The comparison thing is not what you want to be doing. So maybe unfollow those people. It's not that you don't like them. It's not that you're being mean to them. You don't have to follow anyone. I want you to think about what makes you feel good and what makes you feel motivated. And maybe it's education. Maybe it's humor and entertainment. Maybe it's seeing people's travels. Maybe it's seeing people's pets. Follow those accounts and get rid of the other ones. Actually, when I go on my TikTok, and TikTok does seem to have an algorithm that really does learn, who knows, that may change. I see comedian after comedian after comedian after comedian and joke and funny video. And that's what I want. I want to be entertained. You know, the power of laughter. I value that so much because I've trained my TikTok that that's what I want to see. That's what I watch. I spend more time watching those things. And if something pops in that I don't like, then maybe I'll hide it. So just curate what you're looking at in your life because it does matter for our mindset and our mental health. Now, I hope OMG Teach Me is included in what you're looking at. And you know what? That's your choice. You get to choose. So, oh my goodness, 52 episodes in. This is episode 53. I I believe it because I know there's a lot more coming. And I also don't believe it because how has a year past. And isn't that how life is? If you have kids and they're growing up, you look back and you think, where did the time go? And yet, you know, there's so much ahead too. So I just want to say, I hope that these lessons make a powerful difference for you. I am not even the same person I was last year after doing this for 52, now 53 episodes. And that is what we want when we try new things and when we grow. I wish that for you as well. Thank you for listening. Oh my goodness. Here we go into the new year. And before we go, I have a new playlist for you. So instead of Mood Lift, which is still out there, follow it on Spotify or Amazon Music. It is such an amazing selection of songs that will put you in a great mood and maybe get your feet moving. Mood Lift OMG Teach Me is the playlist you're looking for. Now we have Nostalgia. OMG Teach Me. That is the name of the playlist on Spotify and on Amazon Music. I will be asking my guests every week what song gives you such a great feeling of nostalgia, gives you a great memory attached to it. And I've added a couple of mine to start with. So let's see where this playlist goes. Can't wait for you to listen. Can't wait to share all the amazingness with you. Oh my goodness. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. OMG, I would be so honored if you would take a moment, leave a rating, leave a review, or take a screenshot and share on your social media. Let's get this message out further into the world. Now it's time to head down to the show notes to see the resources I mentioned. We may not have learned this before, but it sure is powerful now.